good morning or good afternoon, uh, everyone, depending on where you are. Or dobro jutro if you're coming from uh, Slovenia. Uh, welcome everyone to our uh, event today. We are happy to have you here. Uh, my name is uh, Blanka and I'm in charge of uh, financial industry at Bitterna Slovenia for customer engagement solutions. With uh, InfoBip, we established a partnership a few years ago, which provides a full service to the sales, customer service, marketing professionals covering uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, 365 technology provided by Bitterna and integration with InfoBip solutions uh, for Omnichannel. And today we're having an amazing guest, Ivica Gergic from InfoBip. He holds an MBA from the Frankfurt uh, School and uh, Management, and he will share his experience of omnichannel and digital transformation strategies in the banking and insurance industry. There will be time for the Q&A session at the end, so feel free to drop uh, questions in the chat and we'll answer them uh, at the end. Also, don't worry about uh, making notes uh, since we'll send uh, the events uh, recording so that you can watch it again at a later time or share it with your colleagues. Uh, Ivica, the floor is now yours. Yeah, thanks Blanka for the kind introduction. So Ivica Grgic is my name. I will just give you a short overview of, of me as a person. I used to work uh, in the last 12 years in the banking um, industry and um, I did some uh, um, projects within the digital transformation, um, also like um, CRM and uh, platform economy. And um, I used to work also with uh, big companies uh, which are out there in the market. Um, one of them is Microsoft, which is also a partner of uh, BetErna. And uh, in February this year, I joined InfoBIP as a global lead for banking and insurance. So um, today I want to share you um, knowledge about omnichannel strategy and why omnichannel is a game changer for the uh, banking and insurance industry. So I will just uh, share then the presentation. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, we're going to speak about definition and differentiation, then why omnichannel is a success factor in the digital transformation, how to implicate omnichannel strategy, and what are the best practices in comparison to other industry. So far, we're going to also have a look on framework and regulatory and legal. So um, first of all, I'm just going to give you a brief overview about InfoBIP. So InfoBIP is a global leader in omnichannel engagements. We have around 40 centers um, worldwide. Um, three and a half thousand employees globally. InfoBIP has been awarded um, as one of the most innovative platforms out there. Um, we are also um, one of the um, uh, providers who are offering a broad range of communication channels and at a high speed and reliability in all of the markets worldwide. And um, what we offer also is um, not only um, SAS, but also a consultancy and technical expertise um, around um, our products. So uh, let's speak about omnichannel. So uh, first of all, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, definition of omnichannel. Omnichannel is a seamless and effortless high quality customer experience that occur within and between contact channel. And um, what's the difference between traditional ways of uh, working? Um, which is multi-channel, is that multi-channel is a single non-data connected communication approach, while omni-channel is an integrated real-time information communication approach. This means the difference between these two is that multi-channel in the traditional ways is an isolated perspective of communicating with the customer, meaning getting sources from um, isolated uh, communication channels, which can be branches, for example, or phones, but not having a direct interaction and data gathering, which can give a broader picture and a better understanding of a customer. While omnichannel on the one side uh, can be used to get a bigger picture of the customers using integrated real-time information, 
On the other side, it can be also used to communicate um, with the customer at its best, namely using uh, the matters of the customers and the most convenient way that the customer prefers them for him or herself. Let's move on <clears throat> to the omni-channel as a success factor in the digital transformation. So um, basically, why is omni-channel becoming so famous? Um, the situation which is currently on the market is that banks, um, for example, have um, seen a decline within their structure. First of all, the branch structure, you could see it uh, by closing branches, uh, for example, here in Germany, um, then uh, due to statements that the banking market is, has been overbanked, um, then for, uh, they operate in a low margin field, which also requires um, for process efficiencies and for process um, realignment. And um, combined with that, um, there is a complete new paradigm shift uh, which created new digital players, for example, like N26 or uh, New Bank or Revolut, which are heavily entering the market and attacking traditional banks and, share and insurers on their value chains. Further, we have also changed customer expectations, uh, which are also derived from big tech companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, and um, and um, and consider um, Alphabet and um, the convenience that the customers are um, used to have uh, within these companies are also expected from the banks and insurers. The complication that occurs for the, um, the banks and insurers is also um, the following. First of all, um, banks and insurers have um, complex products. Um, for example, just to name one is the life insurance. Uh, with advanced capabilities. And it is also very, um, very um, interesting to see how banks operated uh, in the past to analyze the touch points across customer omnichannel journey. This was has been done by uh, specific departments in a manual way. And now this shift is required to do it in an omnichannel way, which is also a hurdle for, uh, for a lot of uh, traditional players out there because of uh, monolith and old IT architectures. Um, further, we have a lot of, um, I would call it silo thinking within organization, which leads, uh, leads to unaligned landing pages and product journeys. So traditionally, um, these companies have been operating in a field where you have a product oriented market, which is also the case today, and that you have isolated um, product um, journeys. For example, marketing creates the landing page um, without an alignment of um, customer growth management. What happens is that the customer does not have an experience to buy the product. Um, you have to imagine that uh, most of the customers use a first source of information from um, online pages of the, um, of the companies, and a lot of them could be more um, customer centric. Um, then the next thing that appears is the orchestration between in-person, that means offline and online journey. Imagine if you go to traditional companies which are having branches out there, um, a lot of touch points which are covered in the branch um, not, might, not, might not be sufficient enough to transport them to the headquarters. This can uh, lead to um, a mislacking of churn prevention, uh, meaning that data is not sufficient or not derived at the time when it's needed uh, to be recognized, for example, when a customer could be leaving. So out of these um, market trends and uh, complication, the solution that appears is um, a software as a service, meaning omni-channel. And how to implement that uh, will be covered a little bit later, but um, um, generally the first step is to analyze the adaptability of solutions within the specific countries in the European Union. 
And the second one is to align on a strategy with the client itself and the countries where to implement the solution and how to, to manage this. You have to imagine that we have a lot of pan-European countries working in a different regulatory environments and analyzing these regulatory environments and also the conditions and the market size is crucial to have a tailored SaaS solution. So if we move on, we can ask ourselves, OK, but why should I implement omnichannel within my corporation? Do I have another uh, view of, of the benefits um, or is it just some kind of a buzzword that it's uh, going out there? I would say it's not a buzzword because um, traditionally there has been a lot of um, so-called spaghetti IT inf infrastructure within the banks and the banks and the insurance has worked heavily on it. So um, with an omni-channel uh, strategy, you can also um, erase inefficient processes by connecting the dots and to decrease the complexity level of existing communication methods within the company. Um, the second benefit I would see is the decentralized data, as I saw you like being uh, dispersed offline and online, uh, which can be merged into a sophisticated omnichannel strategy so that all of these um, departments that are involved within a big and a complex organization can uh, communicate with each other and exchange information to the benefit of the, com uh, of the corporation. The third is that uh, a lot of uh, traditional players are, um, as, I, as you saw, uh, have been attacked heavily by uh, new players out there uh, who try to serve one kind of the value chain of the traditional players. So I would say like the, um, the younger generation till 45 um, is very reluctant to leave um, traditional banks, for example. And Omnichannel can also be used to recognize uh, churn and also to serve uh, to the customer better in that way that it's get tailored approach and tailored messages and um, communicate to the customer whenever they prefer. Um, this uh, fourth benefit is definitely um, increasing the market share. So for example, here in Germany, we have a overbanked market uh, in European Union, we are operating in a low margin uh, market. So uh, banks are, uh, for example, um, heavily investing in digitalization and process efficiencies to um, cut costs. Uh, but I think uh, omnichannel as a as a communication method to the um, to the customer out there will definitely benefit to grow the market share in this um, very um, hard markets out there. How to implicate in an omnichannel strategy um, is also uh, very important to understand. First of all, um, it's uh, a crucial to understand the complexity of banking and insurance organizations. So this is a um, McKinsey 7S framework developed 50 years ago and tested very efficiently in the companies. And um, to understand the markets, you will also need to understand the branch infrastructure, to understand the IT architecture, the corporate culture of a company, analyze people, uh, analyze institution and individual skills, and understand digitalization and processes behind. So um, before um, giving an omni-channel perspective to the organization, this framework could uh, be used to uh, grasp a um, holistic picture of the organization and also make recommendations which are um, tailored to these uh, certain uh, corporations. Um, I think one of the major points out there is top priority of, of banks is to understand the digitalization and the processes because uh, behind every successful digitalization you have to understand the processes are there and to try to improve them. But also um, you have to understand the IT architecture, for example, so to make uh, to be able to um, implicate and integrate your API 
Um, then you have to also understand, is it an inno innovative corporate culture or is it more a traditional corporate culture? And with all these information, you can as a consultant or as a CX consultant, align your products to the company in the best way. The second step is an uh, omni-channel analysis used by a lot of um, consultancies, companies out there and by us as well. I took here the framework for the ease of use from Roland Berger, which works with the ACS um, <clears throat> approach. That means uh, one is to understand, is the company ready for omni-channel? The second one is to see, OK, which kind of products can be used for omni-channel strategy? What channels are there to adjust for the preferred channel? For example, chatbots, uh, one of the of the um, main main communication um, platforms that has been implemented on the websites on the landing page from insurers and and banks. Then, first of all, how to use the data, uh, analyze front end and back end processes. And also like to see, OK, how is the supply chain or the, the value chain of the company looking like and where can we uh, save potential costs? And the lastly, also to see, OK, how is the culture? Uh, do we have innovation spirit or do we have silo thinking? Depending on these uh, kind of information, you will also understand um, how long does it take to implement a sophisticated omnichannel strategy within that specific corporation? Um, we move on to best practices in comparison to other industries. So um, here we have an open banking insur insurance monitor done by InnoPay, uh, where you can see uh, different um, different companies. So I will just give you maybe just. 30 seconds to uh, to have a look on that. OK, uh, so basically what this chart shows is like how do the companies operate within specific um, ways? Here we have innovators and functionality. Allianz is one of the biggest insurance companies out there. AXA is so leading the field. On the other side, we have masters in openness, so operating uh, in a rich API scope is the BBVA who operates um, nationally and internationally. Also Deutsche Bank, one of the major players uh, here in Germany and international <clears throat> leaders in experience, ING and Commerzbank, for example, and also starters in opening up. Um, you will find also here a Revolut, HSBC, uh, Balois uh, and Banco de Brasil. These are some of the companies um, which operate also uh, in your market, but also internationally. There are a lot of more of them, but for the ease of use, I use these uh, brands which are recognized. One might ask themselves, why is Revolut starters in opening up? Uh, because um, they are um, basically a fintech. Well, um, it, Fintechs used to work in the in one kind of value chain, which so, uh, solves some kind of B2C solutions, but they are also like uh, lacking behind traditional banks because of compliance and KYC matters. On the other hand, and concentrate also on their uh, products. Um, while these companies here are um, a lot of uh, are very profitable in in some certain ways. Um, Traditionally, fintechs in Europe uh, lack behind profitability and profitability is more acquired than in, uh, in the Asia Pacific regions, uh, uh, leading by Chinese banks, uh, which are then having a different um, structure and also openness model. But that's just just as a as a note. Um, then we can also have a have a look. Um, how does something innovative look like? This is uh, some use case that we implemented at InfoBIP is, for example, 
and onboarding using chatbot. So um, with our solutions, uh, customers can also open a banking account just by using uh, chatbots or WhatsApps, for example. I know that uh, WhatsApp is a, is a very, very um, protected and uh, questionable issue within the European Union, but there are globally markets out there who use these communication platforms, Viber, and and WhatsApp and uh, other uh, tools to communicate with their customer. But just to show you that uh, there the technical possibilities out there, um, there are also other interfaces that can be applied um, with regulatory uh, within regulatory frameworks of of European Union. And uh, the one uh, the second issue is also that, for example. Uh, we have solutions <coughs> where money transfer using voice is possible. Um, so you don't have to use your banking account. You can, you you can just use your voice, uh, which is recognized and secured um, to transfer uh, money. And um, so these are some kind of, of quick, quick uh, insights into what uh, InfoBIP can offer, um, for example, to solve some innovative um, issues. So um, I also wanted to give you one example, which is best practice, uh, maybe from Nike, how the omni-channel uh, looks like. So uh, Nike has basically built up one of the biggest stores uh, in uh, New York. is a is a is a huge store worth visiting. So they have some certain areas, which is a city shop, where you uh, can find your favorite sports. Uh, the Nike Arena covered by different uh, articles and shoes are there where it is like um, a library where you can um, look up, uh, have information uh, about sportsmen. Then the Nike Sneaker Lab designed, tailored for the customers. And Nike by you means um, also that you have your favorite stars like, I don't know, uh, LeBron James um, having some kind of a museum-like spirit. And um, uh, within that uh, journey, you will also always find Team Nike, which is also covering uh, your needs. Um, I think one of uh, examples um, related to the industry could be the transformation of branches. I used to work in the transformation of Commerzbank, uh, where we implemented some kind of experience stores, which are giving the customer an experience, warm coffee, um, also like um, tablet uh, place to sit, which was very, very good and recognized by the customer. But uh, basically, uh, Nike moves a little bit further and use their um, application to have um, uh, some kind of omni-channel experience. So that means that you can use, while you are in the store, you can use your mobile phone and uh, you directly in interconnect with all the customer touching points out there. Last but not least, I would like to speak about framework and regulatory of legal. Um, so our approach is, as I explain, is to understand the client in the operating market and their specific regulatory and legal obligation, and then to adapt to these local markets and to utilize the omni-channel strategy. And um, how do we do this? Uh, well, um, we have a protection of personal information, um, which um, is taken into account. Um, we are certified. Um, having in mind GT, GDPR, our data are located here, and we have also a compliance um, um, department within our um, our um, company that elaborates and um, analyzes also like the local markets. Because um, I don't want to speak too long on that. I just want to give you an insight. But I think everyone is aware of GDPR and also like the, the measurements um, which are out there on the market. Um, looking at the time, I think we have like one minute and we started a little bit later. So I would like just to give you a few chances also like to, to, ask, to ask questions. If there are any questions.
OK, thank you very much. It's, uh, let me check if we have any question. No, there are no questions. OK. Um, yeah, OK, so uh, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this amazing presentation. Um, uh, Ivica, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thank you for a great uh, presentation. Uh, and to everyone, if you would like to learn uh, more about uh, Dynamics 365 and the latest feature uh, coming to Microsoft Dynamics 365 sales and customer service, I would like to invite you to our uh, webinar, which will take place on April 26th, uh, starting at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, so that uh, concludes uh, the event. Um, uh, thank you all for, uh, for attending and we hope uh, that you have learned and enjoyed this presentation and feel free to reach out to me on, on LinkedIn or, or email and if you have any questions about InfoBeep or uh, Microsoft Dynamics.